Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for our training tonight. We're asking, Lord, that our coming here will not be in vain. In Jesus' name, speak to every heart and touch and transform our lives that you lift us up to do what we have not done before and to go beyond our past endeavors, activities, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that our lives and ministries will touch many lives and turn a lot of people unto the Lord as their Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're coming to Romans chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 14. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Then in verse 15, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Then in verse 17, For therein, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith as we look at the verses before us we want to see one the power of the gospel the gospel we have the gospel of Christ the gospel of grace the gospel that brings man from disgrace to glory is the powerful gospel that Christ has given unto us. I want to see the preaching of that gospel. We're not preaching a lifeless gospel, a powerless gospel, a graceless gospel, an impotent gospel. We're preaching a gospel that is able to take man from where he is to where he ought to be. A gospel that is able to reverse all that the fall of Adam did in man and then to bring in all that Christ has provided on the cross of Calvary except the gospel has that transforming power has that present power has that character changing power is not the gospel it is the powerful gospel because the gospel is able to transform transform us who are preaching that gospel and transform the people who are preaching the gospel too we have been preaching the gospel no doubt but now we want to have a fresh commitment to the preaching of that gospel of God a fresh commitment that is we forget what we have done in the past and then we come to the Lord now we say Lord a new life, a new level a new commitment and a new consecration to the proclamation and the preaching of the gospel and we do that in a practical way going places we have never gone touching lives we have never touched and bringing the gospel anew, afresh to the people who are waiting to hear the gospel today we're looking at the message fresh commitment to preaching the powerful gospel there are three points we're looking at in the message number one the preaching of the gospel of his son the son of god the only begotten son the gospel he brought the gospel he paid for, the gospel he shared his life for, the gospel that he finalized on the cross of Calvary, the gospel of his son. Number two, yeah, the power of the gospel of salvation. When somebody truly really gets saved, 
and when somebody hears the gospel and is brought into conviction by the gospel and he goes on his knees and he confesses what he had been and what he had done and he wants a conversion a regeneration from the lord the salvation that comes as a result of that gospel the power of that salvation in the life of the one who is born again who is regenerated who is turned around who is transformed who is born again by the power of that salvation number three in the penetration ways the gospel will penetrate our world we penetrate a community we penetrate our country we penetrate everywhere we penetrate the whole globe with this gospel because this is the only hope of man if man is going to be saved if man is going to be redeemed if man is going to go from where he is to where christ has gone to prepare for us this is the only hope and we need to take this gospel the hope of humanity to everyone and penetrate the earth penetrate the world penetrate the globe ways the gospel by the power of the spirit he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria then to the uttermost part of the earth we penetrate our world with the gospel by the spirit let's come to number one number one we're looking at the preaching of the gospel of his son look at romans chapter 1 verse 9 in romans chapter 1 verse 9 for god is my witness whom i serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son in the gospel in the good news of his son his son has come and has brought the good news the glad tidings that now we don't have to live in sin we don't have to die in our sins we can be saved we can be renewed we can be turned around we can be prepared for heaven in the good news of the son of god it says i serve him with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing i make mention of you always in my prayers and then he tells us in verse 14 i am debtor i am debtor i owe the debt every man around me i owe them something every woman around me i owe her something everyone in my community my country my world i owe them something i am debtor both to the greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise then in verse 15 he said so as much as in me is what does that mean as much as i am breathing as much as I am alive, as much as the open door is before me, as much as the opportunity is given to me, as much as in me is, I am ready. He says there's no day, there's no week, there's no month when he will say I'm occupied in another thing. There's another project I have. He said there's no other project, there's no other assignment. He says any day, any week, any time I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. And then we're told in Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 1, it says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ it's not the gospel of man it's not the gospel of uh, you know any preacher any founder of any church it's the gospel of Jesus Christ the son of God what's his gospel look at verse 14 in verse 14 it says now after that John was put in prison Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God then in verse 15 saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God is that repent ye and believe 
the gospel believe the gospel of his son the gospel he brought the gospel he declared the gospel he passed on to his disciples and the gospel he said must be preached at the edge of the world repent and believe that gospel three things number one the preaching of the convicting gospel number two the persuasion through christ gospel number three our pardon our peace in the converting gospel look at number one there number one there is the preaching of the convicting gospel when we preach the gospel if we preach it aright, if we preach it with the help of the Spirit of God, it penetrates the heart of man. It brings conviction to man. It brings the remembrance of what he had done, where he had been, and where he ought to be. It brings the conviction that he had sinned, that he had come short of the glory of God. And that conviction leads the sinner to want to repent page and have peace with God. Look at John chapter 16 reading from verse 7 Nevertheless I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter the spirit of God will not come. If I go not away the paraclete will not come. If I go not away, the helper who helps the preacher who helps the audience, who helps the people that hear to be convicted of their sin and to look up to heaven for forgiveness, redemption, and salvation. If I go, not the comforter will not come, the practice will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him, the Holy Ghost, unto you. When he comes, what will he do? Look at verse 8. In verse 8, when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will reprove the world of sin. He will bring out and reveal to the world the sinfulness, the wickedness, the corruption. He, the Spirit of God, will reprove, will rebuke, will pierce their heart, the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment the spirit of god will reveal that the world has sinned entirely that they do not have the righteousness that god requests to get us to heaven and that definitely the day of judgment will come it's appointed unto men wants to die and after this, the judgment, and all who have not been forgiven, all who have not been redeemed, all who have not been restored into fellowship with the Lord, they'll be condemned forever. When the Spirit of God comes, if we're preaching the true gospel, if we're preaching the powerful gospel, if we're preaching the convicting gospel, that's what it will do. And then we're told in verse 9, it says in verse 9 of sin, because they believe not on me. And then in verse 10, it says of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Verse 11, it says of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world is judged. Now as we come to Acts of the Apostle chapter 2, the um, people of God, the disciples saved and sanctified, they received the infilling of the Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit, the immersion in the Spirit, and they received the fire of the Spirit within them. And in that stage, in that situation of being filled with the Spirit, Peter now rose up and he preached the word of God in Acts chapter 2 verse 14. It says, but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, hacking to my words, and then he took them to the scriptures. He told them what had happened to Christ, and he told them 
the gospel in short now what was the effect in their heart in their mind what was the effect as they were there listening to the word of god look at verse 37 in verse 37 it says now when they heard this they were preach in their hearts they were condemned and convicted in their hearts and said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do they came under conviction and they wanted to know what they will do if you preach in the power of the spirit if you preach in the conviction of the spirit whether you are preaching one on one one to one or you are preaching to a congregation or you are preaching in the local church or you are preaching in a field outside when we preach in the power of the spirit of god it brings conviction to the people and even though they may not have chance if you're preaching to a crowd like a crusade they don't have chance to ask you directly openly and aloud what shall we do in their hearts they will desire to know what shall we do that we may come out of this condemnation out of this conviction and come to the side of the lord so they asked brethren what shall we do verse 38 and then peter said unto them repent that's the answer turn away what you did sent christ to the cross what you did brought pain to christ he became your substitute and as your substitute he bore the pain the punishment of your sin now if you're going to come out of the condemnation out of the conviction you will repent you will turn away from your sin and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost you receive the grace of the holy spirit you receive the goodness of the holy spirit you receive the gift of the spirit look at acts chapter 3 verse 19 acts chapter 3 verse 19 repent ye therefore christ died for you repent ye therefore you have done evil you are under condemnation because of your sin repent ye therefore if you remain in this darkness of sin in this dungeon of sin in this deadness in your sin you will perish and you will suffer forever and ever repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says unto you first god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you every one of you this is the holy hope and this is the meaning of repentance that he effectively powerfully turns you away every one of you from his iniquities we're coming to number two there number two there is the persuasion through christ's gospel christ brought the gospel christ brought redemption christ brought total transformation total renovation and total regeneration redemption to turn us away from all our sins and now we need to have that persuasion through that gospel of christ acts chapter 19 verse 8 and he went into the synagogue and he spake boldly 
for the space of three months disputing and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. Do you notice that? Paul the apostle went into the synagogue and he speak boldly. If you are sure of what you are saying, you will speak boldly. If you are saying that this is the only answer and this is the only solution and you want to convince the people you are speaking to, you will speak boldly. If you have experienced it yourself, if the gospel of Christ has made a definite, indelible impact in your life, and you know for a certainty that when people come to Christ, there will be a total transformation by the power of that gospel, you will speak boldly. If you love the person you are talking to, you don't fear him. But you love him and you know that what you have is his only remedy for sin. What you have is his only possibility of getting out of darkness and coming into the light. You will speak boldly. And he went into the synagogue. By the way, he had come out of Judaism of the Jewish religion. He had come out, he was not of their denomination anymore, but he still had the law for the people who are lodged inside the synagogue, the denomination there. The people that do not have the light of the gospel. And so he went in there and he spake boldly by the space of three months in the same place knocking 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 at the same issue and they were told disputing debating and persuading them of the thing concerning the kingdom of god persuading that's the word if you're going to persuade people you need to know where you're going while you're speaking what you are telling them, what you are telling them. And you don't want to just preach, just to preach. You want to persuade. You want to convince. You want to get them from where they are to where they ought to be. We're told in Acts chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 18, verse 4, and he reasoned in the synagogue every sabbath he reasoned with them he opened the scriptures he interpreted the scriptures he applied the scriptures to them every sabbath day now he didn't believe in the sabbath anymore he told us himself that the law of moses that sabbath law included an old yet those people were there as a congregation on the Sabbath day. And even though he didn't believe in the Sabbath, he knew that the law of Moses had been cancelled. The people are there. And anywhere they gather, Paul the apostle knew he was a debtor and he was ready to preach the gospel to them who gather even on Sabbath days. What did he do? He persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. He persuaded the Jews and the Greeks, persuading them that religion will not save, persuading them that Judaism will not save, persuading them that Christ who has come is the only one that has power by his sacrifice to get us out of the darkness of sin and to bring God to the light of redeeming grace. Look at chapter 28, Acts chapter 28, reading from verse 23. It tells us, it says, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded 
and testified the kingdom of God. He expounded and testified as he showed them in the Bible, in the word of God, in the Old Testament, they claimed to believe. He expounded and then he testified. He said, me too, that power of the gospel had effect on me. That power of the gospel turned my life. And look at the next word there. Persuading them, that's the word, that's the word. As we preach, we have to persuade the people, convince the people, convict the people, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. You need to, you know, say, if you are not convinced in 30 minutes, good luck. I don't have any time again. If you're not convinced in one hour, good luck to you. Then you can go and then you can perish. He was persuading them, persuading them, persuading them from morning till evening. I pray that God will grant all of us the power of persuasion. That when you speak, the people will know that is the truth and they will believe and accept that truth and the truth they believe and accept will lead them to life eternal in jesus name now we're coming to number three there number three our pardon our peace in the converting gospel the gospel brings conversion conversion we're looking at acts chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 3 acts chapter 15 we're reading from verse 3 and being brought on their way by the church they passed through phoenicia and samaria declaring the conversion of the gentiles they, they had gone out the preacher to me barnabas and so for the work i've appointed for them and they have gone there and now they come back and they said it had not been in vain we didn't go on sightseeing we didn't go to do business as usual we went to those gentiles they had never heard and when we got to them we spoke to them about christ the savior about christ our redeemer about christ our substitute about christ that comes and takes hold of our lives and it shakes every idolatry and every evil thing out of our lives and then we come to christ and we now live the kingdom life they told the church of the conversion of the gentiles and it caused great joy unto all the brethren the conversion of sinners brings joy to all the sinners we're looking at psalm 51 we're reading from verse 10 in psalm 51 verse 10 create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me the believer create a clean heart in me oh god the child of god especially the child of god if you have derailed if you have deviated if you have diverted from the path of righteousness if you had backsliding if you have done things that shows uh -uh, this is the grace to a believer this is dishonor to god and now you come back unto god you repent and you return if you don't return and you carry the placard of religion and you carry the the, the garment of religion and you don't repent from the backsliding if you die in that condition you'll not be in fellowship with god forever you'll be on the other side where the torment and sorrow and crying and weeping and gnashing of teeth all for eternity and that's why that's why uh, david came to the lord and he said oh lord forgive me 
blot out all my transgression create in me a clean heart god you are the only one that can do it and renew a right spirit within me look at verse 11 in verse 11 cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me then in verse 12 it says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation the peace that comes with salvation the joy that comes with salvation the love that comes with salvation and the power of a new life that comes with salvation restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit look at verse 12 13 now then when i'm restored then when i'm regenerated then when i'm forgiven then when i'm set free then when i experience again the joy and the freedom and the peace and the pardon and the power of your salvation then will i teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee sinners shall be converted unto thee i pray through your ministry through my ministry through our ministries sinners will be getting converted to the lord in jesus name look at point number two here now point number two the power of the gospel of salvation the power of the gospel of salvation romans chapter 1 verse 16 it says i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god is the greatest power on earth morality does not have the power to change man to transform man Worldly education does not have the power to transform the life of man. Psychology does not have the power to turn man around and make man clean, pure, and live a holy life in secret and the public. The, the, the theology of man, the theology of this world does not have the power to turn lives around and make lives totally different. That's why you'll find that the people who have done education to the highest level, sometimes they are caught doing bad things, immoral things, evil things. Why? What they've got does not have the power to transform their lives completely. But Paul the Apostle said, if Judaism could have done this, I would have got it. If religion could have done this, I would have got it. If education could have done this, I would have got it. If philosophy could have done this, I would have got it. If psychology could have done this, I should have got it. If science, the science of man, could have done this, I should have got it. But it says, I came across the power of the gospel. And this is what the power of the gospel has done. It's giving me salvation and an entirely new life. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the greek and then it says in verse 17 it says for therein is the righteousness of god not righteousness of man righteousness of civilization the righteousness in past history the righteousness of judaism the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith that means you come in at the gate of faith and then you progress through the guidance of faith and then you go on to the glory of faith from faith to faith as it is written the just the justified shall live by faith 
we come in by faith we're justified we continue in faith and we remain just unto the lord three things we're looking at number one return and become godly through his salvation number two reflect and behold the glory of the sun number three reckon and bring his gospel to all sinners look at number one number one return and become godly through his salvation we return to the lord and we become godly through the salvation of the lord look at luke chapter 19 verse 5 and when jesus came to the place he looked up and saw him and said unto him zacchaeus they had never met and zacchaeus must have been surprised and then he will learn that is the son of god Moses never called anyone by name that he had never met. Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, any of the prophets never called a man, a woman by name that he had never met. But Jesus Christ above and beyond greater and higher than any of those prophets he looked up and said Zacchaeus come down for I must abide at thy house today look at verse 6 and he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully in verse 7 we're told that when they saw it they all murmured saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner why were they murmuring their ignorance they thought they knew Zacchaeus but Jesus knew him more he came to seek and to save the lost the sinners he knew he was a sinner he knew his name he knew his nature he knew his habit he knew his character but he brought the gospel he brought salvation to him verse 8 look at verse 8 this is what the people did not know that is coming down to receive him joyfully brought a change in the life of Zacchaeus you know if you say you know the Lord if you say you have met the Lord and nothing has changed in your life that testimony is rubbish is vain is cancelled it has no weight because your life does not show that you met Christ. Anyone that meets Christ practically, purposefully, anyone that meets Christ meets him redemptively, and it's a change. And so, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, he knew it was Lord. He never met him before, but standing there, staying there on the tree, and Jesus looking up and saying, Zacchaeus, immediately he knew, that's the Lord, that's my creator, that's my redeemer, the one that knows me through and through, before I ever even met him or spoke to him or introduced myself to him, he knows me. And he knows my life he knows my character change came immediately uh, you know there are people who meet Christ casually they come they meet him casually they don't touch him they are not transformed by him but Zacchaeus said Lord behold the half of my goods I give to the poor 
and if i have taken anything from any man by false accusation i restore him fourfold verse 9 and jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house he was an adult he wasn't a baby to be baptized on the sign of the cross on the eighth day it wasn't a teenager they say salvation being born again is meant for young people this man was already an adult it was a man that already had possession and had a house and he was a man that had lived in sin and people knew him in society as a sinful man but now this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is a son of abraham the same faith that Abraham manifested that same faith he has now manifested and he calls him Lord salvation is entered into this of Titus chapter 2 verse 11 in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men it's available for all men for you for me for the black for the white for the Jews and for the Gentiles and when that grace comes look at verse 12 in verse 12 teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly those who are saved they don't live frivolous lives anymore they don't live hypocritical lives anymore those who are truly born again they don't live a worldly messed up life anymore that's a change it says the grace that comes and makes us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world when are we to live righteously and godly i said when are you to live righteously and godly god bless you say that again let me hear you in this present world verse 13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ in verse 14 it says who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works when we're saved we become peculiar Zacchaeus became peculiar that woman at the well after meeting Christ and went to announce to the people in the city come see a man that told me everything I ever did she became peculiar the Philippian jailer that met the Lord as Paul the apostle and Silas interacted with him he and the family became peculiar the people that have been using curious acts before and when they came to the Lord they brought everything together and bought them they became peculiar the Thessalonians that met the Lord their lives showed that they were now totally different they became peculiar Paul the apostle himself that met the Lord and the gospel and the faith he used to persecute now a preacher he became peculiar anyone that meets the lord anyone that the lord lays hand upon and converts him becomes different peculiar if any man be in christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things have become new. look at number two here number two here reflect and behold 
the glory of the sun reflect and behold the glory of the sun in john chapter 1 verse 12 it said but as many as received him to them he gave power to become to them he gave power to become when you receive christ the lord he enters into your life and he gives you power to become the son of god the daughter of god even to them that believe on his name in verse 13 which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god in verse 14 and he says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and will be held his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth and then he passes that grace and truth into your life and you'll never be the same again in jesus name in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all all Jews, Gentiles who are born again, we all, all young and old who are born again, but we all, all ministers and members, those who have uh, encountered the Lord and the grace of God, the gospel of the Lord has impacted their lives. We all with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, beholding as in a glass, in a mirror, the glory of the Lord were changed into the same image were changed if you behold the Lord you'll be changed you'll be transformed we're changed to the same image from glory to glory one level of glory to the other shining glory beaming glory reflected glory in our lives even as by the Spirit of the Lord. I pray the Lord will effect it in every life in Jesus' name. Number three here. Number three, reckon and bring his gospel to all sinners. Reckon. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time and not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It says, persecution, I reckon that this persecution is nothing to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Misunderstanding, pain, difficulty, blackmail, slander. I reckon that everything we go through in this life is suffering as christians as preachers as representatives of the lord i reckon that the sufferings of this present time they are nothing to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, be real sword? I reckon that all those things are nothing to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Look at verse 36. It says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Then in verse 37 it says, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are more than a conqueror. I said, you are more than a conqueror. Anything that happens, persecution, pain, pressure, whatever, you reckon that that will not stop your preaching of the gospel. Because all those things are nothing to be compared of the glory that shall be revealed. Look at verse 38. In verse 38, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Verse 39, 
nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, nor any other creature, nor any other creature. Paul the Apostle looked at himself. He himself was a creature, but he knew creature an empowered creature, an anointed creature, an appointed creature. And then he looked at the Jews and all the other people that were trying to persecute him. They too, they were creatures, but not appointed to persecute, not anointed. And they were not accepted by the Lord. And so he says, I'm a new creature, empowered, anointed, energized, heavenly minded, and I have the glory of God within. And so I'm persuaded that nothing and no one and no other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did somebody say, Amen? Amen. And God has appointed you to take the gospel to your world, to all the people around you. You will succeed. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 in Romans chapter 10 verse 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved look at verse 14 how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? If you don't go out to them as a preacher, how will they hear? Verse 15, in verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. That's what the Lord has placed in your hand. And it says, go tell them. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the penetration with the gospel by the Spirit. Penetration with the gospel. Luke chapter 4 reading from verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me that's what christ said and on the day of pentecost when the spirit came upon the 120 both men and women every one of them could also say the spirit of the lord is upon me and when you were saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you could also say the same thing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the same Spirit that came on Christ, that same Spirit, the gift of God is now given to everyone. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's what the Spirit has done. And then he says, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to search at liberty them that are bruised. Then in verse 42, in verse 42, and when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, stopped him, that he should not depart from them. They wanted him to be in a local place. 
that he should not depart from them what did he say verse 43 in verse 43 and he said unto them i must preach the kingdom of god to other cities also for therefore am i sent look at that he knew why he came he knew the goal he knew the destiny he knew what the father wanted him to do therefore am i sent to preach the kingdom of god to other cities also and that's the same thing he has given us to do now three things we're looking at here number one the penetrating gospel for sinners salvation number two the prevailing godliness of same sanctification number three the permitted global through strategic streams number one number one the penetrating gospel for sinners salvation penetrating gospel that should penetrate the heart and the life of everyone in our community in other communities in every community all over the world in romans chapter 1 verse 16 for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth but they won't believe except we tell them except we show them and preach the gospel to them salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek then in verse 17 for therein if the righteousness of god reveal from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith we need to go and tell them they will not live by turning over a new leaf they will not live by resolution they will not live by self-righteousness they will not live by traditional religion they will not live by mosaic religion the just shall live by faith in ephesians chapter 1 verse 12 Ephesians chapter 1 looking at verse 12 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ we well, want to persuade them we want to penetrate their thoughts that they will know that the only way they will live and come into the presence of God is to trust in Christ. Verse 13, in verse 13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. That's what the gospel is, the gospel of salvation. That's what they make, should hear, the gospel of their salvation in whom also after he believed he was sealed with the holy spirit of promise look at point number two here number two the prevailing godliness of saying sanctification when we ourselves are saved we're sanctified we're godly we're righteous and we do that everywhere and the people who knew us before they knew us like a sinful human being and they could tell our stories but now we have come to christ we have trusted in christ our lives are turned around and we now show that christ who lives in us lives through us a righteous life what will happen they will want to come to the lord through you amen i said they will want to come to the lord through you they come to the lord through us in jesus name look at zechariah chapter 8 verse 23 
Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that sees you, saying, We will go with you. They'll come to you and say, We will go with you. The beauty of God they will see in your life. The miracle of God they will see in your life. The provision of God they will see in your life. The peace of mind they will see in your family. And the purity of life they will see in you. And the power of the Holy Ghost they will see surrounding you. They will come to you. If you believe that I said they will come to you. And they will say we will go with you. Your life, your personality will attract people to the Lord in Jesus' name. We will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. God is with you. The goodness of God is with you. And the glory of the Lord is with you. Your life will attract many people to the Lord in Jesus' name. Number three here. Number three, we're looking at the permeated globe through strategic streams. When we have heard the gospel, when we possess the gospel, now we take that gospel to our neighbor. That one we go with our feet, we walk there, we knock on their doors, we give the gospel to them. How about the people who are beyond the rivers? How about the people who are in all the local governments and the provinces of the country? How about the people that are beyond the country that who cannot walk and take the gospel to them? Any good information they had in those days, they had a way of sending that information Sending that instruction, sending that good news to all the people of the world. Look at Esther chapter 1 verse 22. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces. He sent letters to all the king's promises into every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language after their language and what information were they getting through that every man should be a rule in his own house and that it should be published according to the language of every people now take that in the context of the gospel that man, woman will have the peace of God, the pardon of God, and they will have salvation in all the promises of the world, in all the countries of the world. Now, they did that at that time by physically going to them. But now in our world, we have strategic streams. It may be streaming, it may be social media, it may be in any way, but we have the gospel and now in a very strategic way, God will use you, God will use me, and God will use all the people that have the knowledge of these strategic streams and this good news will go to all languages and will go to all provinces and will go to every place of the world in Jesus' name. Give me a global amen. amen. Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, languages that dwell in all the earth. Think about that. Think about Nebuchadnezzar because he was king. He had the instrument and the tool and the strategy and the way with that anything he wanted to send he sent it forth he said Nebuchadnezzar now the king unto all people unto all nations unto all languages that dwell in 
all the earth living and dwelling in all the earth and then it said peace be multiplied don't you look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says i thought it good you must think if you can if you're going to do any good thing you must plan if you're going to do any good thing you must strategize if you're going to do any good thing i thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the high god the heavenly god the holy god has wrought toward me look at verse two verse three it says how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion from generation to generation and he wanted to publish that publicize that in all languages in all the earth in all the provinces and to all the people of the earth if nebuchadnezzar could do that his personal testimony the personal testimony of the king at that time if nebuchadnezzar could do that we now thinking about our king the lord jesus christ our lord and our savior the one who has come and he has died and all these two thousand years not everybody in the world has heard but now the possibility is there to develop strategy and then to stream the word the gospel unto them unto all people unto all languages unto all provinces unto all countries unto all the tribes of the world if we can do it and we don't do it how will god look at us he that knows how to do good and does not do it to him it is sin we can do it we will do it look at acts chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 5 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 5 and there were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven out of every nation under heaven under heaven me under the skies of the nations of the world and then in verse 6 it says now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language the Lord had said, wait in Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. The day of Pentecost was coming and people will come from all over the world and they will come to that day of Pentecost celebration. And after, it's only when they came, when the day of Pentecost was fully come and all the world represented at jerusalem and all the various languages of the world were represented that the time the lord himself strategically gave the holy ghost and they began to speak in the language of all those people it fascinated them now if you preach the gospel in your own language it will only reach the people in your language if you get the gospel to the language of this language of that language of that language of every country and you then send strategically that gospel unto them in all languages it will attract them and interest them and it says every man heard them speak in his own language and then uh, we're told in verse 11 in verse 11 Grecians, arabians even arabic language we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of god that's how many of them became converted in many languages and as they went back to their places and their tribes and their provinces they took the gospel that had changed them they took it to those other places that the chance the lord has given us today with all the modern gadgets available that now we can make the 
gospel go to every language of the world and this is the time that we can go into all the world and preach the gospel in their language to every creature on earth and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth nor shall be damned and this sign shall follow them that believe they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and they wench everyone and preach the word and God confirmed the word was signs following I pray it will happen again in every country, the gospel will penetrate. To every language, the gospel will penetrate. Through you, through me, through us as a church, and through our people that God has prepared and trained, this gospel will reach the whole world in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Verse 18, in verse 18, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Let me read it now in the first sentence. Yes, verily, our sound will go through all the world and our words unto the ends of the world. God will use you. God will use me. God will use everyone. And this gospel will reach everyone in our world in Jesus' name. Please rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, thank you for your revelation and thank you for what you have done through the gospel in my own life and what you will do with the gospel in our ministries together. Consecrate yourself to the Lord and let him use you today, use you, this generation, to take the gospel to everyone. 